UCT is in desperate need of funds now. Let's see if we can inject a little bit of magic. A train wends its way across a bleak Scottish moor with a cargo of kids. Term is about to begin at a remote exclusive school. Not Harry Potter's Hogwarts, Rannoch. All is not well. There's an acting head standing in for the real headmaster who's having a triple bypass. And the school needs 130 pupils to break even and only has 108. But there is cause for hope. There's a new bursar cutting costs. It's a case of getting pupils, and we must get pupils. And there's a new marketing director who loves the school. It's just fantastic. I am so thrilled to be here. It is just absolutely wonderful. And she'll try anything to save it, including this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to see you here. Okay? Good. Good. I don't remember which house you are. It's September of 2001. Term begins, and the school's hopes are pinned on its marketing director, Helen McGregor. The school she's trying to save is something rare. It's a bit like Gordonston, its largest Scottish rival. For a little more than £15,000 a year, pupils can benefit from unusually small class sizes. Bonjour, Harry. Bonjour. I'm showing you lots of numbers here. Trot is... And it's a broad education that's on offer with lots of fresh air. Popular with the parents of more rumbustious children. That's pretty safe. That's OK. Last term, the school nearly closed for lack of new pupils. Helen is determined to win more, and she's brought her own two daughters with her. It's a fantastic place to work, uh, very friendly, uh, very supportive, uh, and I can see that it's a magnificent school. It's the right place for Catherine because there's so many, it's such a, a small community, she's very well known and everybody's looking out for her and loving her. Uh, and it's fantastic for Laura, she just loves it. She's just happy as Larry. It's so small that you know everyone and everyone knows you, so it's nice. You think you're going to go to a boarding school and you're going to meet all these unfriendly people who sort of all the nicest of people, but then when you come around it, it's so it's all different. And everyone introduces you, and from the second you're there, you're one of them. You're one of Rannick. The threatened school is popular with its pupils. With Helen's help, their parents and friends raised a million pounds last term to save it. The governor's announced closure five or six weeks after I arrived, and to me, it was just such a. Uh, an appalling thing to have done. It was like murder. There was nothing the matter with this school. It may not have been uh, marketed properly, it may not have been advertised properly. There was some reason why we didn't have as, uh, um, as many children as there should have been here, but shutting it was not the solution. Uh, it was just appalling. One of the reasons why Rannick's short of kids is its remoteness. Day pupils are hard to find in the middle of a Scottish moor, but a few more local boarders would do nicely. Helen sets off for the nearest town, Perth, a mere 90-minute drive, where she's hoping to conjure up some new kids. There's a lot of media hype that uh, Harry Potter is going to breathe new life into boarding schools, uh, and that children will think that they're terrific fun. Uh, Rannoch, of course, is terrific fun. So if they come out of uh, the Harry Potter film thinking, gosh, I wish I went to a boarding school, then uh, I want to make sure that they know about Rannoch. She's not alone. Helen's taken her very own Harry with her. Harry Harrison from Rannock's first form, complete with cape and glasses. But first, it seems, Helen will have to generate interest in Harry Potter. Well, it's hardly standing room only, is it? While Helen waits for Harry Potter wannabes, the bursar, Lieutenant Colonel Dudley Ells, retired, gets on with the job of cutting the running costs of the headless school of Rannock Moor. He's discovered that the school is renting rubber mats for doorways and corridors. Every month, the mats are collected, replaced and taken away for cleaning at a total annual cost of £8,000, half a year's fees. This is getting to be a little bit of a fetish with me at the moment because mats and the cost of them, I spend a lot of my time going around the school looking for wretched mats. It reminds me of the Falkland Islands 
Yeah, I'm just going to have a look in the sports hall, see if I can find a map. Rogue maps. You've got none down there, have you? Rogue maps. We were brought a boarding school if you use a friend for it. Oh, uh, well, if you get a scholarship, if you're very good at something, you can be very good at rugby or football. football? Okay, uh, yeah. Catch a leaf, it's supposed to be good luck. I just missed that one. And that one as well. And they are two big mats, which will save us, I suppose, that's um, about four pounds a week. Are you supposed to be Harry Potter? He is Harry Potter. I think the big one can come across into the middle, and we'll take the little one. And that should be about another one pound seventy-five a week. Where are all the others? I think we might as well give them out to the bus queues in a minute. Six pounds a week. I can't imagine the cinema is full, uh, but certainly nobody was rude or aggressive. They all were very polite and took them. Whether or not they take them home and read them, I don't know. Hopefully by two weeks' time, I'll have been able to get round, find all the rogue mats, and then we're talking about having got rid of three quarters. Come on then, Harry. OK, can you walk with your cape? Helen has no background in marketing. Until recently, she was a lawyer. As for Dudley, this is his first job since leaving the army. What brings him to Rannoch? The challenge, of course. It, it is an immense challenge to get it to school out of trouble and get it on its feet and get it really progressing and growing. Rannoch um, is the future for so many children that wouldn't get the same opportunity in other schools. But does Rannoch have a future? No crystal ball is required to see two basic problems. Without 22 more pupils, the school will close for lack of money. And it's now clear that the original headmaster can't return. David McMurray has come out of retirement to help the school. But this is only a short-term measure. A permanent headmaster must be found. Well, this is a very important day in, in the uh, life of the new Rannoch because this is the day uh, of selection of the new headmaster. So we've got five candidates here today and they're touring the school, they're meeting a lot of people, they're being interviewed by two panels. Yes, we we'll certainly get a good headmaster out of that group. With the interviews over, the candidates are offered a drink and a chance to meet the staff. Upstairs, the board begin their deliberations. I think you've got two strong candidates there. The, the, yes. the question is, will they come? It's a question if they turn us down is the issue. Yeah. And it's a very serious one, too. Very familiar experience. You start as a buyer and you end as a seller. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was that uh, I was sitting in the, this office at 8.15 this morning and the phone rang and it was one of the candidates uh, pulling out and uh, I had no sooner put the phone down from him than the, the other one rang up, the other one who was coming on the shortlist, which is very disappointing indeed. Both the candidates gave the same reason for their withdrawal. The school, they said, was too remote. Harry Potter may have failed Helen, but in America, there's yet another magic castle she can turn to. Rannoch old boy Duncan Wardle is now a vice president at Disney. Helen seeks his advice and persuades him to part with a free place on a Disney course to improve her marketing skills. She will learn the Disney approach to customer loyalty. And Disney's customers are very loyal indeed. Before the course begins, there's time for Helen to visit her mentor. Duncan Wardle invites her for a working breakfast in the Magic Kingdom. It's a chance for him to remind her that despite the obvious differences, Rannoch and Disney are more similar than they seem. Everything we do is based on our core values, which are entertainment, creating magic and fantasy and removing guests from everyday reality. And I think, again, that correlation between Disney and, and, and Rannoch is that when you stray from your core values, people aren't sure where you're going. And when they're not sure where you're going, your brand fails. It would be also interesting if we could get, um, is there anybody at the school that could get us a curriculum? Do you have a curriculum with you? Mm. No, I didn't bring a curriculum with me. But there's one huge difference between Disney and Rannoch. Disney generates hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and Rannoch doesn't.
We're currently sitting on a deficit of um, £357,000 and with depreciation of £500,000 um, things are not looking good. And this makes an overdraft um, of some £993,000 and our bank limit, bank overdraft limit is set at 750000 at the moment. So as you can imagine we've got, um, we've got a problem at the moment. <laughs> The headless school of Rannoch Moor is running out of cash. Can Walt show Helen how to save it? Oh my word! Not straight away. For Helen, the course proves somewhat confusing. Trying to convert Disney speak to Rannoch speak, that, that'll be a challenge. Loyalty action steps, strengths indicator matrix. Helen McGregor! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been fun. Okay. Thank you very much. I struggled with it. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Helen receives the kiss of Mickey and returns to Rannoch to decipher the Disney speak. <laughs> yeah, great. But the board have turned to another entertainment empire in her absence, Virgin. A friend of Branson has suggested that the school could raise its profile and bank balance by taking staff and pupils to California to run a marathon. I offer you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, a unique challenge and a stupendous opportunity. Run for Rannoch. We have devised for all pupils and members of the Rannoch school community a uniquely exciting end to the spring term. On Saturday, the 23rd of March, there takes place at San Miguel, California, the Buzz Marathon. We shall be there. It is our intention that all members of the school will participate in this event. Yeah, it's very fantastic. good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It'll be good for the school. Good, uh, good bit of PR. I'd quite like to do it, but I'm not quite sure. Looking forward to going. Yeah, it'll be really fun. Training for the Walk for Rannoch commences immediately. At this early stage, many of the children are lacking in commitment. And after her Disney disappointment, there's only one company that Helen thinks can help. Cadbury's. The Times doesn't carry pictures of Dundee High going skiing. Why should they carry pictures of us going off to California running? This is going to be a riveting exercise. Um, but then I, it's, it's what I've been doing all my life in the army. Um, moving people from one side of the world to the other. Admittedly not children. I don't see how it's going to raise us a lot of money. Um, I don't personally think it's particularly newsworthy, but then um, each to their own. Um, I'm a boring person and I like doing jigsaws. It's Christmas. What will Santa bring for troubled Rannoch School? A new headmaster, James Carpenter, from fashionable Cheltenham Ladies College and a fair-sized parcel of new pupils. Morning. Morning. Oh, we're doing very well. Absolutely thrilled. Tickle pink. Ten new children, and I've still got a chance of two more. Uh, and now James is going to take it forward. It's fantastic. With all these ten pupils. Lovely. Tickle pink. Pleased to death. It's not like selling double glazing. It's, it's just, you know, all these people would... would just, they, they need to come here. I, you know, this school will be full. 60, 70, 80 for September. Who knows? Anything's possible. Yes, anything is possible, including the discovery of a headmaster who thinks Rannoch is not remote. Well, I, I don't see Rannoch being in the middle of nowhere. I see it as being in the heart of Scotland. I think if you look at a map, Rannoch's the heart of Scotland, and I, I like that metaphor. Wonderful place. Sad to see the back of it. As the temporary head departs, the new head gets straight to work. 
bringing ladies' college discipline to the unruly Rannock kids. There's been poor behaviour in the junior house. It's important that you know that we're going to expect you to be responsible, because recently <coughs> there's been a lot of irresponsible behaviour, not from everybody at all, in fact only from a fairly small number of people. But those people need to know, yes, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Those people need to know that you're going to be kept under a close eye and we want to see that you make a, a really good thing of this. Under the watchful eye of Tony Malia, the older boys will move to another house. Only the youngest boys will remain behind in the care of Simon Lind and his wife Catherine. Simon knows what sort of message is being sent and he doesn't like it much. I don't, I don't want to... It's a bit difficult not the idea that I was unable to look after them properly so that had to be taken away and I don't want that kind of connotation or attitude to come through. Do an inspection before supper, JJ, so you have everything squared away by then. I think that, like most kids, they, they really want to have a structure around them and uh, they want to know where the boundaries are. Collection of rugby and footballs for the house office, otherwise they'll be bouncing off the corridors. The potentially school-saving run for Rannoch is just six weeks away, and the school commissions publicity pictures of two of the most marketable runners, the Smith Twins. Dudley's trying to find out what's happening about the cheap flights. Engaged. But he's not getting any answers. Dudley needs a miracle. Um, this is one of our parents who says she's a healer, and she can send healing to anyone anywhere in the world, if need be, and so can cover the well-being of pupils for this trip and the race, if you like. So, I think we'll get her to do that at a distance, and we might actually get her to do something for the school as well. As Dudley struggles to get the run for Rannoch up to speed, Helen is putting the finishing touches to an event that may save the school, an open weekend. It's her big marketing push, the first open weekend that Rannoch has ever held. You realise that this whole morning I have achieved nothing. Potential pupils will come to stay and have fun. Nothing. Nothing. And one piece of the Disney course has lodged itself firmly in Helen's head. So maybe the first point of contact for us as an organisation to look at is the signage. Alison, yeah. have I got my laminates? No, I've done them yet. All right. Uh, okay. Right. Well, the parents are arriving at half past twelve. That's right. Okay. All right. Okay. It's just that I would like them actually on the walls before the first parent arrived. Right. Okay. Thanks. Very helpful. Right. Good. No, I think it's excellent. We'll put the notices up after all the parents have arrived. Will that be useful? <laughs> <laughs> um, not very. I tell you what, I could, I could write it in Alison's blood across the walls. <laughs> Open weekend this way. No, that's unkind. Hi, I think, we, I think we spoke on the phone. Yes. Hello, pleased to meet you. Sorry, you're Mr. Lewis? Nice to see so many people here, but they're too early, uh, and I wasn't really organised because we didn't have the notices up outside, and I haven't got emergency phone numbers for them to be able to ring their child uh, if they're in trouble, and that should be here soon, so hopefully I'll be able to catch them before they leave. Uh, more thought for next time. How many marks out of ten do you give yourself? Oh, three, if that. Well, four, because it's a nice day, and I did organise that, so that's all right. Four. It started raining. Has it? Okay. In fact, the Disney method has at last made sense to Helen. The open weekend is an application of a Disney principle. No one sells you better than a current happy customer. 
and Rannick's pupils show themselves willing to risk spinal trauma to save the school. The open weekend draws to a close. Has it been a success? Will the children like what they've seen? What's the vibes? Great. Great. Nice, nice. Good, good. Good, good. Lovely. It's been great. Absolutely wonderful. All 22 want to come. I'm thrilled to bits. The Disney method delivers 22 interested pupils from just one open weekend. There may just be 118 pupils now, but 130 in September is beginning to look possible. But the fizz has gone out of Dudley's day. He's just found out that the flights for the run for Rannoch will be less than cheap. If I'd been able and allowed to work on this on my own way back in December, which I was quite happy to do, I'm quite sure we could have got a very, very much cheaper deal. And not only that, there was a time, I think, about five weeks ago, when there was a big article in the paper saying £99 flight to San Francisco. We could have done that. It's unbelievable. Anyway, this is what you get when you rely on someone who says they're going to get you a cheap deal with a personal friend who happens to be Richard Branson. Next morning, Dudley takes refuge in the Burse's office. He's waiting for the Sunday papers to see if the press release for the run for Rannoch has been well received, and he has some posts to sort out. And the headmaster's got a parcel. Definitely tuck. And he's always getting it. Oh, I got a letter. Oh, no. Someone removing a pupil. Said I thought it was going to be a good day today. It's just what we need at this stage. With his postal duties completed, Dudley goes for a drive to put things in perspective. Well, now you know how quickly the weather changes around here. I mean, one minute sunshine and next minute rain. But that's the way life is. Um, and, of course, this is the end of a, what I'd describe as a pig day. Um, just about everything's happened today that's uh, not mean good, but uh, i come to expect it. What have we done? We've, we've lost a pupil today. Um, he's being taken away at half term. We've reached the stage now with Run for Rannoch where um, I am beginning to wonder whether it will make money. It will certainly raise the profile of the school and that I think is the main reason now for, for going ahead with it. Um, but the publicity has got to be very good. Hoping against hope that the press release for Run for Rannoch will attract huge press attention. Unfortunately, Rannoch has chosen the weekend of Princess Margaret's death to make the announcement. Princess Margaret. Princess Margaret up to page 22. I never was convinced that it was stunningly newsworthy. Pointing to be proved right. News of the world. No, nothing. Absolutely big non event. It hasn't been the big um, fundraiser or big profile raiser that it had been hoped for. So, um, I'm pleased that it hadn't fallen in my lap to have anything to do with the organisation of it. I think it's a bit of a damp squib. So we still need to save another 27k? Yes. Since James Carpenter became head, the school's yes. bank, the Royal Bank, has been rather unsympathetic. It's time for James and Dudley to give the school's accounts close scrutiny. 15 times 12. Yeah, that's... <laughs> 30 times 680. 180 then? Yeah. yeah. Look, bad. It's very bad.
the school needs to cut costs still more. Catherine went in before me, and she was sort of told to sit down, and then without even a thank you, how are you, or whatever, she was just told, you have no job in September. That was it. As bluntly and, if you like, as rudely as that. And, well, uh, there is no easy way of telling someone yeah. that they're being made redundant, obviously, but there are ways and there are ways. It would have been kinder for Simon to have been told first. This is really the heart of what we've put into the house. And effectively, it's an 8x4 model railway. Or it would be, or it will be when it's finished. The headmaster was in here and I showed him this. And I told him, this is what we've put into it. And this is the thanks that we get. Goodbye. And as you can imagine, we're not feeling terribly happy. Mm. For the sake of the children, we'll do our best. Because we've still got them for the next term. And uh, they may still be here for the future, but we won't be. The day of departure for California has arrived. Worried by the unsympathetic attitude of the Royal Bank, James is approaching other banks to see if they'll take over the school's account. While the kids begin to congregate at the school with their luggage, Dudley works at home to clear his in-tray. And it's rather full. I've got the VAT man on my back. He's after £21,000 that we haven't got. So I've got to find a way of delaying him until I can get some money in. Any news from the bank? No. But then I suppose I could hear from them on a Sunday. Anything possible with that lot? I had Hazel asking no um, less than half an hour ago how we were going to pay the salaries this this month. Um, if we can't pay the salaries, the bank's going to hear about that pretty soon, and that's going to be curtains. <laughs> <laughs> the coaches depart. No real money has come in as yet. It looks very likely that the run will cost the school as much as £40,000. The pressure is on. What the bank wants is proof that children will come to the school in real numbers next September. And the only proof they'll settle for is deposits paid by interested parents. Right. I need to brief you okay. on the details of what's happening at the minute. Okay. The the key deadline for us now is the fifth of April. Right. And not everybody's going to be aware of this, but right. you need to know. Right. And uh, at that point, we have to go to the bank, the Royal Bank, and say, "This is where we are. Okay. This is what's right. firm for September." Right. And they'll make a judgment as to how <clears throat> firm it is. Okay. And so the key thing for us is to have as many of the deposits paid by the 5th of April as we can. Well, are we going to get any money out of this run for Rannoch? Any sponsorship thingies coming back? Any, any major sponsors? No, nothing. But the priority in the next 48 hours is, yes. to, get as many, is to get in touch with, with as woman. many people as these people yes. and get them to send us yeah. £500. Right. In her office, Helen sets about drafting an email tactfully requesting deposits from interested parents. James tries to get in touch with an alternative bank, the Bank of Scotland. Mr. Ash, it's James Carpenter from Rannock School. Hello, how are you? Yeah, not so bad. Um, I, I just wondered if you could tell me how far things have got. Right, dear so and so, just emailing you to confirm that you have received the offer of a place for the. But, but what about the sort of the bigger question about whether you'd be prepared to take us on? All right, that'll do. So what's the situation, Grace? Uh, the situation is that they've put a proposal to the board and the board, they need a response from the school or the board. The board has to come back to him with, with an answer. And half of them are in California, running a marathon. Helen takes her dog Digger for a walk. 
Her reserves of optimism are running low. There's nothing now I can do about the money. But what I can get is children for September. What I can't get is 34 deposit checks of £500 apiece in the next three weeks. If the school is going to go down the pan now, well, it'll just have to go. I am not killing myself for a second major effort. You know, ignoring my children, um, you know, just getting up, going to work, staying there till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, going home. And, and however hard I worked, I'd be asking the same people to help again. Uh, and why should they? That night, Helen follows up her emails with a phone call. I mean, all I can say is that if you pay your 500, if you decide against at the end of the day, you can have your 500 back. I'd rather have a late yes than an early no. <laughs> all right, no pressure, no pressure. Okay, thanks. <laughs> no night. I, I don't see myself as a debt collector. I don't like being asked for money, so I don't like asking other people. No, I have to think that uh, Dudley and James will sort out the money. Because I've got masses of people interested for 2003. You know, I'll get 50 or 60 for this September and we'll be on a roll. Great. So long as there is no whisper um, outside their master study of there being dodgy finances. It's the morning of April the 5th. The children are on holiday and will be for the next three weeks. Helen too has gone abroad. It's time to face the music. Time to hear what the bank has to say to the headmaster, bursar and governors of Rannoch School. No new bank has agreed to take on the school's account. The Royal Bank is Rannoch's only hope. Probably they're gonna tell us whether or not they're prepared to support us uh, for the forthcoming year. And the most pessimistic forecast is that they're going to say that they're not prepared to support us. And what we have to do is to make a case why they jolly well have to support us. The news is good. Impressed by Helen's work in James's control of costs, the bank extends its deadline by a full two months to the 30th of June. But if on that date, the Board of Governors can't produce proof that it will have sufficient pupils, the Royal Bank will pull out. What obviously that they're not wishing to do is to be the cause of closure. The, the, the monkey is very much back with us. We have, as a board, got to make the decisions, do we go forward or not? And he's, he's given us time to find an alternative banker as well. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, eight, ten, ten weeks is much better than three days. Yeah. You know, it, it, they have moved quite considerably, and you know, that's been heartening to see that. Why do you think they've moved, James? I think the decision to close Rannoch School would be the wrong one for them to take. And that they know that. They sit here and they know that what's on offer is a very good education. And they don't want to be the people who close it down. Including leavers, the school will need 40 new pupils in September. £600,000. Should they announce closure instead? That would give pupils and staff time to find new schools and jobs. Six days later, on April the 11th, the board convenes. James is spending the Easter break in Cyprus. Will the governors vote with their heads or with their hearts? Who wants to go first? I do not think you'll get the 40 pupils signed up by the 30th of June. So I don't think you'll make it. That's my feeling. I, I just feel there are so many more positive things in place. And as I said earlier, with none of the negatives, that um, I, I have confidence that we should be able to get those numbers. Ted. 
Regretfully, I don't think we'll be able to satisfy the bank by the 30th of June. I think we can make 40 by the end of September, but not by the 30th of June. 20, your thoughts? We, I think, have and are about to miss, I suspect, a, a real opportunity to do what Ranach is all about, which is to push on, just move that bit further and put ourselves in the position that we can keep the school open. James has done his sums. He phones from Cyprus. OK. Thanks, James. He's not confident that we're delivering the numbers. And he says that you know, we're talking of six signed up now, 20 very hopefuls, of which you can turn that into potentially 10. And going in last year, we, turned, we, we recruited 15 between the end of June and the beginning of September, which leaves us 31, which leaves us 10 short. My counting of the votes is that eight people are minded that we cannot continue, and three are minded that we can. Does anyone want to change the way they have voted? as a no. I think we're left in a very, very hard position. We've got to announce closure. The board have given up. Rannoch School will close at the end of summer term. <laughs> Rannoch School's last day has come, closed by its governors in the face of a bank that wanted a decision three months before the school could know what its numbers would be. They might well have had their 130 come September, but no one will ever know. The um, pupils are, I think, I think all of them have now got schools to go to, which is a great relief. All but, I think, three of the staff have now got jobs. Um, I don't have a job just at the minute, and I shall be applying for things as they come up in September. I'm looking at two other jobs overseas um, as a possibility. One is in uh, Bioko Island, uh, which I'll be applying for, which is the old Fernando Po. I, I knew it would be horrible. I knew it would be hard. And then it was, it was just the buses going and, you know, them saying, you have to get on the bus now, and everyone getting on. I know, buy a house uh, on the west coast somewhere, uh, find a school for Laura, um, and teach Catherine at home. Has it been worth it, though? Oh, yes, yes. Worth it for Laura. She will never forget her year here. Be very good for her. That's it. I'll see you, Lord. planet's most intelligent species involved in a struggle with history's most ruthless killers 